back to the realm of unpopular opinions. It is finally time for another video because November has sucked. Not reading wise, university wise, I had to suffer through the worst, absolute worst subject for me. Like my literal worst nightmare. <laughs> so the reading has been pretty much okay because it's a coping mechanism, especially when other stuff sucks. So this will actually be fun, but sorry for the lack of videos will be better in december because like so many favorites videos need to be made that it will be frankly a little bit annoying to just keep gushing i can't wait to make the ones where i hate on something because that will be very few and far between but without rambling welcome to the november wrap-up let me know what your reads were like and i will try and not go too in depth on a lot of these now, first up, I read another Dylan Dog. It was one of the, like, large ones that's not in color, but it's just a little bit more fancy. I do not know what it was called in English because on Goodreads, they're logged in Italian, and I am not going to go fetch it because the comics are my dad's, and I have no idea where he put it, to be very honest. But that's the first thing I read because I was still feeling a bit spooky. It had witchy vibes, if I remember correctly, but that was, like, a very quick read. I'm not like gonna dwell on that. I just know that I might read some more in the future because I enjoyed it. Now the first actual book I read was Possess by Gretchen McNeil. Now this book, as I probably said before, got me back into reading during my like three year slump back in middle school because I found this by accident in a bookstore and I could not put it down. I also ordered another Gretchen McNeil book immediately afterward. And then it was some time before I read Red Queen and I was back in reading. But <laughs> the problem with this is that I get how I enjoyed it when I was like 14. But I am not really <laughs> capable of that mindset anymore. Like I get how this would be entertaining for someone who was writing for episode and even occasionally reading Wattpad stories. I get how I would enjoy this. But like the most interesting characters for me were the old priest and the demon king or whatever the hell he was so so this is just not for my age anymore but I will always cherish these books for what they meant to me back then I might even give the other one a try because I remember it not liking it as much back then which probably means it could be the other way around this time but yeah I gave this three stars I had to because even though I did have fun it was just so annoying I felt like I was 14 again and not in the good way more like in the way of Jesus Christ can you please <laughs> can you please stop thinking about kissing the jock because you have more important things to deal with like exercising demons I realize I don't really give summaries when I do wrap-ups so I will do my best to do short ones this time but possess is about a girl who has the ability to talk to demons and she exercises them with her priest guardian type of person where does it take place i mean she's 15 although it doesn't really read like 15 but i mean it wouldn't last time i read it because i was younger than that i cannot really find where it is where it takes place but in any case three stars a bit of a disappointment but i also kind of expected it because you can't always really enjoy the things you did when you were 13 or 14, but if you do, that means it's good. And if you don't, it just means it's exactly for its intended age audience. <laughs> I continued strong with the thrillers because I don't know why I didn't like Tess Garrison at first, but now I just am craving her every once in a while because I really know what I'm going to get with her. But this was another not exactly miss, but not exactly a <laughs> hit either. Like, it's not on the level of The Apprentice. I hated that book, but it is not on the level of The Killing Place because this was just boring in a very weird way. Like, it's not boring. It's technically a very dynamic story. It's about a murder that happens in, like, Chinatown, and there's a lot of stuff about warrior swords and... I wouldn't say Asian culture, but also, I guess, yeah, Asian culture because she is... Asian so she wrote about it she said like this was her most personal book or whatever 
but as a thriller it was just boring half the time i was hoping that she would dive into the supernatural aspect because that would actually be more interesting but i what i'm gathering is that every book that's really centered on jane i just do not enjoy like the only book that was a hit for me <laughs> had more mora than jane and I actually disagree with Mora in this one. And there's not a lot of her. And there's like one chapter where she meets up with one of the characters from The Killing Place, which was my favorite. So I enjoyed that. But the whole main conflict I just didn't find interesting. Like I would have read an entire book about the martial arts masters <laughs> and her pupil and the sword. As long as Jane wasn't there. I don't know why I don't like her. She's kind of like... I don't know, she seems like a cliche, like how you would imagine a female cop to behave in America. I feel like that's how she behaves exactly. And she rarely steps out of line of that. And I just do not enjoy her character. So the little bits and pieces that I did enjoy earned its four stars, but I think it was like a 3.6. So like very close to three. But I will tell you now, I read it three weeks ago. I do not remember a single thing apart from like the little details so that is not very good for a thriller like i remember the entirety of the killing place and i don't even remember which month i read it so this was not really a hit not really a hit but i do want to keep going because i know that rat and bear come back again and that's honestly the only thing that i'm interested in probably know if you watched the video where no you didn't watch the video it's not uploaded yet the video where I haul stuff from the book fair because November is like book month where I live. I'm not sure if it's universal, but it's it is here. So I got the new Diary of a Wimpy Kid book. I get them every year and I realized that this is the 10th one that came out since I started collecting them, which is so weird to me. That means that I've been collecting them now for a decade. I started reading this when I was 10 years old. It's just a nostalgia kick for me like it is such a nostalgia kick for me and I look forward to buying them every year like he has a formula that will never fail we don't even care <laughs> that Greg Heffley is still in middle school like 16 years after the first book but it's just a comfort thing for me like I know it will be coming every year and I look forward to it every year so it was just great and a lot of fun and especially now that I realize that it's a 10 year anniversary <laughs> for me but this one is basically about his hatred of sports and I can relate to that one definitely I always give them four stars because they're not something phenomenal I kind of reserve my five stars for something I will remember because these are more like passing books like I don't remember them after I've read them but it was really enjoyable and definitely he I don't think I've ever read a bad <laughs> bad Diary of a Wimpy Kid book because it's kind of always what it is. The next one is going to be a fun one because I am going to have to talk about it a bit, a bit longer. But that would be Noragami Stray God. I'm not even sure how to hold this up so you can see it. <laughs> Let's do it like this. Yeah, but I rewatched Noragami because I knew I wanted to read the manga back in August when I first watched the show. But I never got around to it. So I wanted to rewatch the manga and then dive straight into the... Rewatch the anime and then dive straight into the manga. But after I finished it, I realized that in the store that has the most manga in my country, I think. I've never seen that much anywhere. There's like an entire wall just for manga. And I picked this up, which is the first volume directly after the show's ending. But I didn't realize that it actually, <laughs> like every, almost everything that takes part in this volume takes part in the OVAs, the season two OVAs. So it was actually technically kind of repetitive because I just watched the OVAs. But I love the manga so much now. Just for reference, I caught up with this in like <laughs> two days. Let me actually check so I, I'm not bullshitting you. Like, I'm going to check when I logged the last one. Yeah, I finished it in, like, three days. Three days, let's be fair. Or more like two days because I read it at night, so the dates. Two and a half days, anyway. I finished volumes 11 through to 25 
I guess 25 because it's not a complete volume yet. I adored it. Like, I adored it. And when I found out that it was made by women, it kind of made a lot more sense. Because this is the only relationship in any anime manga that I've ever watched that I actually really am invested in. And all the characters are amazing. All the women are icons. All the men are really well written. So I loved, loved, loved the manga. Like, I always loved the anime. I knew I wanted to read the manga right after. And I usually know I loved the anime when I wanted to read the manga. <sighs> but there's just no words for how much I loved this. The art style, though, is so pretty that it's frankly a little bit... Like, it's a really, really well-drawn manga. The only thing I can compare it to is, <laughs> is the master because he's my favorite. But these women, these, these women <laughs> can draw and write and I love them so much. I flew through the manga and I cannot wait for the new chapter. The only thing that annoys me about manga is that like 1% of them are actually finished. I think she's been writing this. They have been writing this for like, what, 11 years? I'm not sure. I didn't check. Anyway, everyone has been writing the manga that's out right now currently for like a decade. The only thing that I have to complain about in this series is that the pacing is sometimes a little bit jarring. Like they will have three volumes of intense battle where you're just like confused. You have no idea what's going to happen. You're always on the edge. Who's going to die? Is something bad going to occur? And then they will just end it and proceed with like two volumes of fun like they're gonna go to a town fair they're gonna do a flash mob they're gonna <laughs> they're gonna just like hang out it's a very weird pacing thing but I can say that I don't enjoy it it's almost like a palate cleanser between the battles like there's a serious sequence with the gods and then <laughs> then it's just them having fun and I don't know Yato being an idiot so yeah, I loved it. I loved it a lot. My favorite character remains to be Hiyori, which is my first favorite female character like in a in an anime. It's usually male characters, but that makes sense because this is the first time I've read something written by women and it kind of makes sense that male characters would be better made when they're done by men. But yeah, she is an absolute icon and I love her, but new favorites, which I'm so sad didn't get adapted into the show. Takemi Kazuchi and Kiyun. Every time that they're on page, I am just bursting into laughter. They are absolutely my favorites. They are currently on my lock screen and you have no idea how much I love them. Every time, every time that they show up, I know I'm in for something good and funny. So they are definitely my new favorites and I'm so sad that the show cut off like right before they actually become characters. And they are the only ones who actually become characters who are present all the time. And it's funny that it's treated in a way that they also are very confused about suddenly being characters. Like why are we included here? Why are we here? We're not friends with them. <laughs> and I love that. I adore that because we first actually get to know them in a battle where, where they are against our main heroes but they just become iconic characters and I'm very happy that they do because I love them and the last thing I read from Noragami was the stray stories which was kind of handled in all the ovas and they shoved some of that stuff into the show too and I also read the like short two chapters of like clash show ye gods of calamity or whatever I don't know how to log that anywhere so yeah Noragami this is the only volume that I have currently I will be collecting the rest of them because this is a favorite now and honestly these women these women are icons and some of the prettiest manga drawings I've ever ever seen now it's time to talk about something that's very not personal to me but I was just very happy I got a severe craving for Ursula Le Guin because I've been wanting to continue Earthsea for months because it's been like a decent amount of time now since Johanu that I don't want to kill myself every time I think about Earthsea. And I'm very happy that I picked her back up because this is going to be very hard to hold up. I am so, so happy that I continued because Tales from Earthsea are so much better from Tehanu. Now, 
a side note, not completely. There's like five stories in Tales from Earthsea and two of them reminded me of why I stopped reading it, but three of them were absolutely phenomenal and magical and I was so happy. I was craving her world and her writing because I love her writing. I want to get into her sci-fi maybe potentially eventually <laughs> that rhymed, but yeah, I was just I was just craving it so much and I was just so happy. It was like coming to a peaceful home. I don't know how to explain it. Her books and her writing give me the feeling of Studio Ghibli movies or Ghibli. I'm not sure again how you say it. Probably Ghibli. Yes, <laughs> like just yes. It makes me feel calm and at peace and the nature and the just wonderful descriptions. 10 out of 10. I love her. And one of those stories was bad because it was short and didn't really do anything, to be honest. That was, I'm not going to say it correctly, so let me just, let me just check because I always mess that one up. Dragonfly and, no, Dragonfly and Dark Rose and Diamond. Those are the two that were duds for me. Now, Dark Rose and Diamond, because it was too short, too short and nothing really happened and I didn't care about anyone. And Darkfly, because it... <laughs> because it was the closest to Tuhanu out of all the books. Now, I, again, know why she is so angry. Like, I understand. But this is your world. This is your fantasy world. You do not have to be annoyingly and very on-the-nose feminist inside your own world. Like, in the other three books, she also made some very strong female characters. But no one forced you to make men the protagonists. No one pointed a gun at your head and told you to make stories about men and then when you try making them about women it makes it look like you don't know how to write women which is obviously a very important issue to you Ursula so I do not understand it like I don't want to hate your female characters because that's not what you wanted but obviously you are just way too angry when you write about them so I'm just annoyed <laughs> but I loved the way she did female characters in the three stories but Darkfly was just so on the nose, it went nowhere. And her girl boss moment, her girl boss moment just turned out to be like, oh yeah, by the way, everything you've read so far is pointless. Like, don't even care about the outcome because I'm just gonna fly away and that that is it. No development, no, no nothing, basically. So apparently, for some reason, Ursula is very angry about the fact that she writes men wonderfully so she tries to shove women in there and she always fails like in her books when women are protagonists I just want to crawl into a hole and never pick her up again but the other stories make up for it because they have normal female characters like subtle like actually woven into the story and not just there to spout nonsense at me <laughs> so yeah Loved the three stories, the two were duds, so I gave it four stars, but I'm really happy to be back in the world. I love her writing more than pretty much anything, and I'm just so happy. I would still recommend it. Like, if you were angry by Tahanu, <laughs> angered by Tahanu, I would still keep going because it's good. I have not completed it yet. I think I have one or two stories left, so I will actually do a comprehensive review once I'm done with all of it, but... This short story collection reminded me of why I actually loved the <laughs> original trilogy and this is literally just like Studio Ghibli in writing. This is just going to be a side note because I want to mention it. I'm not even going to hold the book up. This is going to be uh, an explanation that I am finally giving up on 1984. I realized when I went on Goodreads that I've been reading that book for a year and that's my second attempt. It's just not not gonna happen. Like I played the audiobook and had to stop it because I had had enough of the torture because it was being very not descriptive but like unending. So when I checked the book I had like a hundred pages left and I realized that if the torture is this bad right here I don't need it. Like I watched the movie 1984 this month. And I asked my dad, like, is the ending, is everything that occurs when he is captured the same as in the book? And he said, yeah. So I don't need to read it. I will not read it. And, like, that's it. The main <laughs> portion that's interesting is 
what I did read, like the first half, the first bit and the creation of society and everything, I don't need to partake in a hundred pages of mental torture. Like, thank you. If I am voluntarily reading this book, I don't need to. I already watched the movie and I cried. So I don't need to do this to myself again. So I finally put it down. I gave it my best shot. I, <laughs> over the course of two times, I got to page, what, 300? I'm not sure. No, I don't even know how many pages there are. I read like two thirds, quite enough. Thank you. I absolutely respect what he did. I love his concept and how bleak the work that he did and the war actually <laughs> made him. But I don't need to read about it. Thank you. I really don't. I will probably give Animal Farmer a go though because it's shorter and I think I can get that done even if it is a lot of depression. Now lastly of all the books that I actually completed I have Tokyo Ghoul. Tokyo Ghoul Days <laughs> to be more precise. Now I have one more novel left in the Tokyo Ghoul universe and then I think I have literally everything that has to do with Tokyo Ghoul. Like even have the two art books, though they are wonderful by the way, but I have only one more novel to go. And I love these novels because it really feels like Shintowada. I keep reading this in the accent of my own language and not English, but I feel like the pronunciation is way more similar to my tongue than the English tongue so <laughs> just a little green like just a thought but I love these novels because it really feels like he worked with Suishida to get it correct and he doesn't like write a lot about each character because it's almost like he doesn't want to invent too much <laughs> this one is about I mean <laughs> I was gonna say something but I think it's kind of a spoiler so anyway it's about certain characters and how they all relate to this one storyline because he managed to make one story but then like divide it into six parts, dif different points of view. And the Tokyo Ghoul Ova Pinto about, <laughs> about Tsukiyama and the little girl with the camera who's there on the <laughs> left. Is from this book so it was really kind of fun to read about and I loved the Kaneki, Toka and Hinami <laughs> adventure in the library even though it was extremely depressing when you really think about it but I really enjoyed this one a lot more than the last one because I think he kind of delved into the characters more. There was also a character that I'm not sure is a character in the original series but I could not be remembering it because I'm gonna need to do a reread of Tokyo Ghoul once I get the first box set but I think the books are really worth it if you love the world if not it's not essential it doesn't really add any new information but I think it's really fun to get through because the novel format is kind of unique I think for manga and light novels have really increased my experience for my favorites like the Bugo Stray Dogs light novels are so much better than the manga and I'm loving them but what I do like about light novels is the like the the pictures like there's just a chapter and then there's a picture this scene by the way is so so heartwarming for some reason I'm gonna try and find another one it's a book and it has pictures I think that's the definition of a light novel I didn't look it up but I think that's it so I think it's worth it if you enjoy the world they are very fun and I enjoyed it. Five stars. I don't think it's ever going to be below five stars because, again, Tawada really, really doesn't play with it too much. He just kind of almost like he's <laughs> describing everything that already occurred in a very different way, which obviously isn't true. But you get what I mean. Like, he doesn't take too many creative liberties, which is what I love about manga and anime in general. They don't often ruin the original work they are the best at adaptations which is ironic because Tokyo Ghoul is probably the worst adaptation anime ever so I understand the irony as always I will be discussing the books that I'm currently reading and I kind of went overboard and I'm currently in the middle of like five books which I hate doing <laughs> like I hate doing because I feel like I need to read all of them at once and then I just read nothing but let's just update you on that one. I am still reading, obviously, Asimov, The Complete Robot, because 
I didn't get that much farther in. I'm still at like page 90. I didn't even finish the last short story I was reading because, because I started it when I was at Ikea and I wasn't really, really enjoying it when I was then. <laughs> so still reading this short stories, a very long book though. So I'm not sure how long this will take. I hope to finish it in December. Next book that I also bought at the book fair is The Book of Dragons by Jonathan Strand, Strawn, whatever, whatever his name is, which is, by the way, a gorgeous cover, but so far a bust. I read two stories and, and despised the two stories because I wanted a book about dragons and not about people who are like, I guess, dragons. Like, there's a story about dragons just paying taxes and doing a lawsuit against the humans. Like, no, absolutely. The first story starts with a dragon flying over a city and there's immediately, like, a mention of Walmart. And I just, I just said no instantly. But that isn't, obviously, I only read two of the stories. Hopefully not all of them are like this. If yes, I'll sell the book, but hopefully not all of them are like this because I signed up for dragons, like this type of dragon, not, not Smaug trying to pay off his student loans. But there are some very pretty illustrations, like at the end and beginning and in the middle of the stories. Like it's a very well made book. <laughs> and there are some by... R.F. Kwong, Garth Nix, and Scott Lynch. I'm really interested in the Scott Lynch one, but I will try and get through most of them, if not all of them, and hopefully at least one of them. <laughs> one of them is decent because otherwise this book is such a failure and such a very, very much failed marketing opportunity because when you see this, you wouldn't really expect dragons in New York, would you? Because if you would, then you and I do not have the same assumptions. <laughs> definitely, definitely not. So I will get through this in December because if anything, I want to know if it's worth it or not so I can sell it. On a better note, I started The Dragon Reborn. I didn't read much. I read like two, three chapters. <laughs> so definitely not a lot. But I watched the third first three episodes of the show which this will be the only time I ever mentioned the show and immediately afterward I was like I need I need the book to feel to feel okay again like I like this was the worst experience ever I didn't think anything would be worse than Shadow and Bone but so I needed this to comfort myself but I realized I wasn't really in the mood for it maybe because of the show <laughs> but I'm gonna try and finish this in December, but if not, it's just gonna go over into January. Like, it's not my priority right now. I think of all the books that I'm currently reading, this is the last one I will pick up. And I mean, they're chunkers, as you know. So Dragon Reborn, not a priority right now, but the what I did read, I loved it. <laughs> and next, I have on a, <laughs> on a similar kind of note, the Way of Kings by Brenton Sanderson. I'm pretty sure that the vlog where I say that I'm reading this hasn't gone up yet. So this is the first time that you hear I'm giving this this man another shot. <laughs> like if you're new or if you haven't watched the videos where I shit on Sanderson, <laughs> I do not like Sanderson like at all. At all. Anything that he does, like no. And do not ask me to elaborate. Like we all have people that we just do not like. <laughs> not, don't, if you see them, you're just like, Absolutely not. I'm not getting vibes that I enjoy from you. But in this case, I do not like his writing or his worlds or his anything. This, however, is lauded as his best work, as his finest. So I said, all right, since it's discount week, you will get The Way of Kings. This is just the first half, the first 600 pages of the first book. If you do not enjoy this, then you can finally say that you are never going near Sanderson with a 10 foot stick. Because if this is his best work and you hate it, then I guess people would need to leave you alone. Which is a stupid reason I understand, but I have to admit that I was curious. Like I'm always curious. When I hate someone, 
I'm always write writer wise, like author wise. I'm always interested in their best work because maybe I've just been reading duds. Maybe like this wasn't their finest. So let's try out their <laughs> let's try out their finest. I only got like hundred pages in, and the only thing that I can say that's positive is he has excellent designers, like wonderful designers. The page headers, the drawings, the like illustrations. Yes, I would love his design team, but I would not like his editing team because <laughs> they did not go do a good job. And if anyone tries to argue, have at it. And the fact that he said he's been working on this for 10 years is just depressing because Anderson, if you've been working on this for 10 years, then why is it so bad? 100 pages in, I know there's 600 more, but just for reference, my dad also had this book. I think he gave up after like, he had the full book. I think he gave up like at 250. So we will see if I make it longer than he does because we have very similar reading tastes and maybe I won't DNF this one like Mistborn. But also again, if I finish this and don't want to buy part two, that's also a failure. That's also a failure. So I've been rambling too much. I don't really have anything real to say aside from the fact that I've liked nothing so far apart from the illustrations, but we will see. Look out for the vlog where I talk about this because, <laughs> because he's probably my 13th reason book-wise, so it should be entertaining, if anything. And the last thing that I will talk about is Jane Eyre. I watched the movie the other day, the 2011 one. Loved it. Absolutely loved it. New favorite. Love the vibes. Love the romance. Wonderful. So I immediately picked up Jane Eyre. I knew I had the, a copy of the book somewhere buried on the shelves. I never thought to read it, but now I will. Like, now I will. There's one thing I would say about <laughs> Charlotte Bronte. Her writing is a little too... I need to reach for the dictionary. <laughs> because my mother said she's like, it's not happening. Like, I do not understand at all what they're saying. And I do understand what they're saying, but a lot of the time there are words that I'm just like, you could not have phrased this in a simpler way. Like, I'm good at English. I'm better at English than my native language. And this is killing me at some points. Like, I love her atmospheric nature shots and the dialogues. But at some points, it's really like, I will not be looking this up, Charlotte. <laughs> I will just not be looking this up, so can we please move on? And I will say one thing. I read, like, 150 pages almost. I will say one thing about Jane Eyre. I understand the age differences were normal back then, but you don't need to tell me every two dialogues that he is 38 and she is 18. You don't need to point that out. I'm aware, but when you don't mention it, I can pretend in my head that it's actually a normal age difference. So please stop saying it. Please stop pointing it out because I will be uncomfortable. Hopefully she never mentions it in the book again so I can just gloss over it. <laughs> that is it for <laughs> my November wrap up. I hope you enjoyed. I hope it was somewhat fun to watch because there's an array of things, like a big, big array of things because I'm capable of like putting down a manga to read a thriller and then moving on to high fantasy. So I'm a weird person that way, but to be fair, that kind of spans across all my interests, including reading, TV shows, movies, everything. Apart from writing, I don't think I will ever write anything that's not fantasy. And on that note, I just want to point out a little update because I am not going to do it anywhere else. I don't think it warrants an entire video. I won NaNoWriMo, but to be fair, I set my own goal. I didn't put 50k, I put 40k words because I was trying to be realistic. I knew it would be a uni month for me. But I did reach 40k, like, <laughs> on the last day I crossed it by 700 words. So I did win NaNoWriMo this year, my own goal. And I'm very happy about that because I got a lot of writing done, like a lot. I finally am, like, 220-ish pages into my VIP and I'm very very happy about that because I am loving where I'm at right now in the story that's kind of the only update that I need if you're more interested in writing let me know because I would enjoy making writing updates alongside like my wrap-ups or in vlogs or whatever but I think more people watch wrap-ups than vlogs so <laughs> it's easier kind of to do here and that would be it for today 
a lot more videos in December because this week is the last one that I'm hopefully done with the god awful subject. If you're wondering what subject it is, it's commercial law and anything with law in it can just walk straight out of my life because there's nothing that I hate more than law. But yeah, now I'm rambling. Hope you had fun. Let me know what your favorite book this month was and I will see you in the next video.